Hello everybody, welcome back to the online course on embedded system design verification and test. So, in our last class, we have introduced about the notion of temporal logic and we have seen that in temporal logic apart from the logical operator, we are having some temporal operator. We have discussed about those temporal operators and the meaning of those temporal operators. Okay. Now, today we are going to discuss one particular class of temporal logic which is known as CTL computational tree logics. There are several varieties or several classes of temporal logic and CTL is one of them. So, we are going to discuss about the syntax and semantics of CTL. Now, in temporal logic what we have seen that we are having temporal operator by which we can reason about the time like whether always something is going to happen, whether in future something good will happen like that. And the truth values of temporal operator or temporal formula is defined over a model. We have seen that given a model m and a temporal formula phi, we define an inductive definition of the notion of phi holding at a position s i in m and it is denoted by in model m at state s i it models phi or phi holds in the state s i of the model m. This is the notion of giving the meaning of a temporal formula. Secondly, already I have mentioned that temporal formula is valid in a state of a model or we can think that or we can say that temporal formula is valid or true in a part of a given model. So, we are having the notion of state formula and part formula. Okay. In case of part formula, the truth values of the temporal formula is defined over a part. In case of state formula, the truth values of a temporal formula is defined on a state of a given model. So, we must have a model and truth values of the temporal formula is defined either on state or over a part. In case of part formula, truth values is defined over a part or in case of state formula, truth values is defined in a particular state. So, after getting the idea about the temporal operators and temporal logic, we are going to discuss about a particular class of temporal logic which is known as computational tree logic CTL. On the other hand, CTL is a branching time logic. Already we have mentioned about the notion of time progress, either we can consider time progress in a particular execution trace, which is basically known as your linear time logic. And on the other hand, there are several possible execution of trace of a from a given state in a model. And if we are going to reason about all possible execution traces, then we have to deal with the branching time logic. So, CTL is a branching time logic which is known as computational tree logic and the meaning of the CTL is defined over a model. Already I have said that temporal logic has to be defined over a model, but for definition of CTL we are going to consider a particular class of model and we will discuss about those particular model and we will dis discuss how we are going to define the truth values of a formula in that model. Secondly, CTL is a state formula. The truth values of CTL is defined in a state of a given particular model. So, just you have considered this particular model that it is having three state S0, S2 and S1. And it says that if it is in S0, then we can have two possible transition, either it can go to S2 or depending on the situation it can go to S1. When it is in S2, then from S2 either we can have a transition to S3 or we are having a transition back to S0. And so, once we come to this particular state S1, 
then system remains in this particular S1. So, this is this model is nothing but a state transition diagram. The system is having several states and it shows the transition between different states. So, here in this particular model we are having three different state S 0, S 1 and S 2 and if you look into it then you will find that there are five different transition in this model. Now, this model can be expanded by looking into those particular transition. Now, just see that if we are in S 0 from S 0 we can go to S 1 or we can have a transition to S 2. Now, when we are in transition S 1 then we can have a transition to S 1 itself. Okay. Now, on the other hand when we are coming to S 2 we can go to the state S 0 or we can go to the state S 1. Okay. Now, in this particular case you just see that this state S 0 and the initial state S 0 are having the same behavior. The label A B indicates that we may have some proposition over here two proposition variable A and B the root values of A and B is true at that particular state S 0. Now, when we look into the execution then that will be expanded to a particular tree. So, this state again we are encountering S 0 because we are having a go back path. So, in this particular state also property is same that it is having that provisional formula A and B are true, but only difference now we can consider over here that if this is starting point and we say this is your time t 0 then after having one particular transition we can say that we are going to state t time t 0 plus 1 or if the other possibilities is also there. So, time at that particular instance is your t 0 plus 1 which is considering that one time unit for one transition. So, in this particular way now we are in this. Now, when system progresses then in second transition I am going to get that the time of this particular state is T 0 plus 2 here also T 0 plus 2 and this particular state is also T 0 plus 2. Now, when we consider about this state as 0 and the other state as 0 their behavior is same because some of the propositional variables are true in this particular states, but only difference is the time or you can say time step. It is showing the behavior of the system at time t equal to 0, but this particular state showing the behavior of the system or the state of the system at time t 0 plus 2 after 2 time unit. If I am considering the time step for one particular transition is 1. So, we are just expanding the given system to a tree. This tree is known as your computational tree and the logic defined over this tree to re define some properties that is why the name is given as your computational tree logic. So, we are going to discuss about the syntax and semantics of this particular logic CTL or computational tree logic. Now, what is syntax? Now, as you know that in every logic or in every computer programming language we have to define the syntax and according to the syntax we have to write valid sentences of that particular logic or of that language. So, when we look into the CTL formulas then CTL formula comprises of one component atomic proposition. So, we are having some atomic proposition P Q R then if you consider one particular atomic proposition then what will happen the true values of this particular atomic proposition will be either true or false. So, we are having some atomic proposition the true values of the atomic propositions are either true or false depending its status. Along with that we are having one particular notion or particular <coughs> identity which is known as your path quantifier. So, it is quantified over the paths. So, this path quantifiers is A and E. A stands for in all possible path 
and E stands for dear existed part. So, we are going to reason about in all possible parts or there may exist a part if we follow that particular part the property will be true we form that particular state. So, these are the part quantifier A and E. As we have already mentioned that all the propositional connective can be used in our temporal logic. So, as such all the propositional operator can be used in our CTL also. So, these are the basic operators I am saying and or and not. Similarly, others also exclusive or nan, not everything can be used in CTL. And we are having temporal operators and the basic temporal operators are basically next which is represented by x, future which is represented by f, globally which is represented by g and we are having an until operator which is basically until. Out of this particular four operators already we have discussed you will find that next globally and future these three are unary operators. Okay. It works only on one particular variables, but until u is a binary operator we need two operators to express the formula or sentence using this particular until operator. So, already we have discussed about the meaning of this particular four operators. So, in CTL we are going to use this particular four CTL operator sorry temporal operator. So, our CTL formula consists of this particular four temporal operators also. Now, the formal syntax of CTL can be given in the BNF notation. I think all of you know about the BNF notation. So, this is the fifth way to representing the syntax of a given language. So, in CTL computation tree logic the BNF notation of the CTL is as follows. We are using two symbol one is known as your bottom and second one is your top. Okay. So, this is basically read as bottom and second one is top. Basically bottom we write bottom to indicate the truth value false and top we write the symbol top to represent the truth value true. So, truth value true and truth value false are also CTL formula. So, top and bottom are CTL formula. Secondly, we are having a set of atomic proposition. So, every atomic proposition is a CTL formula. So, whatever atomic proposition we are using in our system. So, every atomic proposition is treated as a CTL formula. Independently, it is a formula, it is a CTL formula because truth values of this formula will be either true or false. If it is true in a particular state, then we say that the truth values of that particular atomic proposition or the CTL formula is true at that particular state. Similarly, the, if the truth value is false of that atomic proposition, then we say that the corresponding CTL formula is false at that particular state. Now, if phi is a CTL formula, so then not of phi is also a CTL formula. Basically, we are using this particular logical connective. Phi and phi is also a CTL formula. Phi or phi is also a CTL formula. Phi implies phi is also a CTL formula or you can list any other logical connective. So, if I am having a logical so, if I am having a CTL formula phi, then phi with any logical connective phi is also a CTL formula. This may be conjunction, disjunction or exclusive or implication whatever it may be it will become a CTL formula. Now, we are having four temporal operators. So, with the help of this four temporal operator also we can construct CTL formula. So, these are the CTL formula. So, x next is a CTL operator temporal operator. So, with x we are constructing two CTL formula A x phi and E x phi. So, A x phi basically says that in all possible part in the next step phi holds. 
Okay. Or E x phi basically indicates that there exists a part, at least there should be one possible execution part in which in the next step phi is true. So, we are getting 2 CTL formula from the temporal operator x, a x and e x. Similarly, we are going to get 2 temp CTL formula with the temporal operator f, a f phi and e f phi in all possible part or there exist a part. Similarly, in case of G operator global operator, we are also going to get 2 CTL formula A G phi and E G phi. Like that for until operator also we are going to have 2 formula A phi until psi or I can say that A phi until phi and E phi until phi one says that in all possible execution trace phi remains true until phi becomes true. Okay. Similarly, E says there exists a path. So, these are the path quantifier and the path quantifier is used along with the temporal operators to form a CTL formula. Okay. So, basically we just said that let V be a set of atomic proposition that this is a component and every atomic proposition will be treated as a CTL formula and this CTL formulas can be defined recursively and every atomic proposition is a CTL formula. Firstly, if it is a CTL formula then with logical connective we can form CTL formula and with temporal operator we can form CTL formula, but if you look into it if you notice that every CTL operator is preceded by a path quantifier. So, that is why if I am saying that F 1 until F 2 until is a temporal operator it says that F 1 remains true until F 2 remains true. So, this is a temporal operator and the truth values of this temporal operator basically define over a path, it is a path formula. But if we give the path quantifier either A or E, then it becomes a state formula. The truth values of this formula is defined over a state. So, basically I can say that if this is the state S 1, I can have several possible tra execution trace. Okay. Now, if we are going to have these things, now if I said that a f until f 1 until f 2, if this is a CTL formula, it says that in all possible execution trace from this particular state 1, f 1 remains true until we are reaching a state where f 2 is true. So, this behavior should reflect in all possible part, then only you can say that A f 1 until f 2 is true. Similarly, if we say E f 1 until f 2, then what it says at least we must have one possible execution trace, where f 1 remains true until f 2 becomes true. Okay. So, with this particular part quantifier A and E, we are constructing a state formula and the truth values of this particular temporal CTL formulas defined in a state. So, it is a CTL is a state formula. Now, what is the meaning of those particular thing? Already I have mentioned A x f 1 that means x is the next operator. So, A x and E x. A x says that they are in all possible execution part in the next state f 1 is true and E x f 1 means there is just at least one part where in the next state f 1 is true. Now, if I look into this particular scenario, say this is the state S 0 and if I say that f 1, f 1 is level. What does it mean? It says that in this particular state S 1, formula f 1 is true 
and in the state S 3 formula f 1 is true, but in S 2 formula f 1 is not true. So, this is the label basically we give we indicate the proved values of the formula. If it is true generally we indicate this particular formula to show that the truth value is true. So, in this particular case you just see that at least we are having one particular part in the next state f 1 is true. So, in S 0 E x f 1 is true or we said that in the state S 0 A x f 1 holds because we are getting one next state at least one next step where f 1 is true. But if I look into this particular scenario then A x f 1 in all part in the next state f 1 is true we are just looking for this particular possible behavior. So, in that particular case A x f 1 is not true. So, A x f 1 is false at S 0, but E x f 1 is true at S 0, because in we are having three possible execution part from this particular state S 0, but if we follow this particular part then what will happen in next state f 1 is not true. So, like that we have to see whether the two values of this given temporal formula is true over there or not in a particular state. So, similarly A f 1 until f 2 and E f 1 until f 2. So, f 1 remains true until f 2 becomes true. So, in a particular part I can say that if the scenario is something like that. So, that in this particular state S 0 if I go by this particular part I will find that f 1 remains true until f 2 becomes true in a particular state. So, in this particular part this formula f 1 until f 2 is true. So, if I come to this particular state S 0. So, here I can say that E f 1 until f 2 is true like that from S 0 we may have several possible execution trace. So, if in all execution trace the behavior is something like that similar to this one then I can say that in all part f 1 remains true until f 2 becomes true. Okay. But if any one of this particular part this behavior is not showing or not satisfying then a f 1 until f 2 is false at that particular state s 0. So, similarly we are having the global. So, in global it says that globally it is true that means in all possible state f 1 must be true then only we will say that a g f 1 is true if it is all possible part. So, if I am going to have some scenario something like that. So, if I look into this particular scenario then we will find that if I go if I proceed through this particular execution part then we will find that in all states f 1 is true. Similarly, if I proceed by this particular execution trace then again we will find that in possible in all states f 1 is true, but if I follow this particular execution trace in this two state f 1 is not true. That means, if I am going to look for the truth values of this formula A g f 1 then A g f 1 is not true at s 0 because we are going to get one execution trace where f 1 is not true in two of the states. Okay. But if I say that E g f 1 where there exists a part globally f 1 holds yes we can say that either we can consider this particular part or we can consider this particular part then in all the state f 1 is true. So, at least there exists a part where f globally f 1 holds. So, we can say that E g f 1 is true, 
Now, in the same model, now you consider this particular step S 1, whether A G F 1 holds or true in S 1. So, in that particular case, you just see that from S 1 I am starting and it is having only one execution path in all the states f 1 is true. So, we can say that. So, here a g f 1 is true. Now, if I extend this particular give one more transition from S 1 to this particular state, here also you will find that it is having two different execution possible traits. So, in both the paths in all the state f 1 is true. So, we can say that A g f 1 is true in state S 1, but already we have seen that A g f 1 is not true in S 0. So, already I have mentioned that true value is defined in a state in case of state formula. So, similarly we are having the operator future f. So, again we are having A f and E f. So, in all part in future or in all real existing part in future. So, it is like that if I am going to consider one particular state we may have a execution trace and we are going to check whether somewhere in future f 1 holds or not. If this is the scenario then you can say that in the state S 0 a f f 1 is true. So, these are the operators and these are the meanings and in case of CTL we are defining the truth values of a CTL formula in a state it is a state formula. Now, what is the basic notion if you see or if you observe you will find that every CTL operator is preceded by a path quantifier. That means, if we are having any CTL form operator if it is preceded by a path quantifier then we are going to get a state formula and CTL is a state formula all CTLs are state formula. So, that is why you are if you look into the definition you just see these are the operator temporal operator that we are having. So, all temporal operators are preceded by a path quantifier either A or E and with the help of this path quantifier we are getting the state formula. So, the truth values of CTL formulas is defined over a state and from observation what we can say all CTL operators are preceded by a path quantifier either A or E. So, we are getting a state formula and the truth values of CTL formulas are defined in a state of a given model. Now, some example you just see if I am writing some example over here as a notation you see that we are using those particular path quantifier A or E or that temporal operators and the logical connective. Now, whether these are valid CTL formulas or not we have to check for it and if it is syntactically, syntactically correct then we say these are the well formed formula of that particular logic. Now, consider one particular example over here say I am talking about A G P implies not of E g not of q. So, whether it is a valid CTL formula or not ok constructively ok. Now, in this particular case now you see the VNF notation of construction of CTL formula and see whether we are going to get a CTL formulas or not. So, in that particular case you just see that P is a atomic proposition. So, every atomic proposition is a CTL formula. So, this component is a CTL formula. Q is also a CTL formula because it is also a atomic proposition. If phi is a CTL formula then not of phi is also a CTL formula. So, what I can say not of Q is a CTL formula ok. Now, we can use if phi is a CTL formula then 
E G phi is also a CTL formula. So, E G phi is also a CTL formula, okay? because globally there exists a part globally not of q holes. I can you know that if phi is a CTL formula not of phi is also a CTL formula. So, negation of this is also a CTL formula. Now, if I am having two CTL formula phi 1 and phi 2, then we can connect this two CTL formula with any logical connective. So, this is also a CTL formula P implies not of E G not of Q. Now, if phi is a CTL formula, then with the help of temporal operators along with the path quantifier, we are going to get a CTL formula. So, A G phi is also a CTL formula. So, if we look into the component wise, then we can say that these are all the components are CTL formula and by connecting them with logical connective or temporal operators, we are going to get a valid CTL formula. So, in this particular case now, now where we have seen, I can say that P and Q, these are the sub formulas of this given formula. Again, since Q is a formula, so not of Q is also a sub formula of this given formula. Similarly, E G not of Q is also a sub formula of the given formula. Similarly, not of E G not of Q is also a sub formula of this given formula. And finally, you can say that P implies not of E G not of Q is also a sub formula. Okay. So, in this particular way, so finally, this sub formula is connected with A G in all part globally. So, the given formula is also a CTL formula. So, like that, if you analyze the other formulas that I have mentioned over here, you will find that all of these are constructively correct CTL formula. They are correct CTL formula. So, here another example you just see that here P and Q are atomic proposition, they are CTL formula. So, P and Q is also CTL formula. So, if phi is a CTL formula, then E F phi is also a CTL formula. If phi is a CTL formula, then negation of phi is also a CTL formula. If phi is a CTL formula, then A G phi is also a CTL formula. So, like that you can look for all those particular equation that whatever I mentioned and you will find that all are constructively correct CTL formulas. Now, look another set of formulas. Okay. So, in this particular case just see that if I am going to write this particular formula F r until q. So, what it means in future r remains true until q becomes true, whether it is a CTL formula or not. So, do not confuse, it is a temporal formula, no doubt about it, because we are using temporal operators over here. What are the temporal operators that we are using? Yes. F and until, future and until. So, F r until q. Now, in this particular case say r and q are atomic proposition. So, we can treat them as your CTL formula. When I come to r until q, then it is a temporal formula no doubt, but it is not a CTL formula, because this until operator is not preceded by any part quantifier. Okay. And after that I am getting f r until q, again it is a temporal formula, but it is not a CTL formula, because again f is not preceded by any temporal operator. So, it violates this thing. So, in this particular case what I can say, if I write E f e r until q. So, that means, there exists a part r remains true until q becomes true. So, now this until operator is preceded by this particular part quantifier e. So, this is a CTL formula, but I am having another form of temporal operator f which is not preceded by any part quantifier. So, it is also not a CTL formula, but if I write a f e r until q, then you will find that now this becomes a valid or 
correct CTL formula because this temporal operator until is preceded by part quantifier E and this particular F temporal operator is again also preceded by another part quantifier A. So, it becomes a CTL formula, but as such the given formula R F R until Q is not a CTL formula. So, if I or if you look or analyze this particular formulas, you will find that these are not correct CTL formula, but all of these are temporal formulas, but not CTL formulas. Now, we are going to look for the definition of semantics of temporal formulas, how to define the semantics of a temporal formula. So, already we have said that the truth values of a temporal formula defined on a model. So, in case of CTL, we are going to consider a particular model. So, what is this model? The minimum component that we have in the model is having a three tuples S, arrow, and L, the basic notations that we are using over here. So, the semantics of CTL is defined over a model which is defined as three tuple. So, M is basically consistent S, arrow, and L. Now, what is this particular component? S is nothing but a finite set of step. So, we are going to define the two values of a CTL formula on a finite state system. So, number of states are finite. We are having a transition relation arrow, which is a subset of Cartesian product S cross S. That means, if we are having set of states that means, we are having a transition from any state to any state with for all s belongs to that set of state s there exist s dash belongs to s such that s and s dash belongs to this particular transition relation that means, if this is s and I am having another state S S and if I am having a transition from S to S S. So, the member S to S S, this is nothing but a member of S cross S, Cartesian product of S on S. So, this member is a member of this particular transition relation if we are having a transition from state S to S and the basic emphasis it is given with this particular state particular symbol for all state. So, basically for all state there must be a next state that means, from every state we are having an outgoing transition. If we do not have the outgoing transition then this is not a valid CTL structure or temporal structure for defining CTL formula. And along with that, we are having a labeling function which is known given as L. So, what is this? It is L is a function from the set of states to the power set of V. And what is V now? V is nothing but the set of atomic proposition, okay, because we are going to work with a set of atomic proposition, the two values will be either true and false. So, we are having a labeling function if a particular atomic proposition is true in a particular state, then we label this particular state with the help of that particular atomic proposition. So, you just see that CTL structure is similar to finite state transition machine. We are having a finite number of state and we are having some transition from states to states of this particular machine, but the transition is having a particular property, it is complete that means, from every state there must be an outgoing S or outgoing transition to some next step. Along with that, we are having this particular labeling function. So, this is extra apart from our finite state machine that formal definition of finite state machine, we are having this particular labeling function. So, once we have these things then generally in historical note <coughs> region, this is known as our Kipke structure. That means, the truth values of a CTL formula is defined in a Kipke structure. So, what is a Kipke structure basically? Now, I am saying that it is similar to the 
fine edge state machine, but transition relation is having a special behavior, it is complete in nature. That means, every state should have an outgoing edge, that means, every from every state we should have a transition to some other state and along with that we are having the leveling function. If we are working in a particular system, then if the atomic propositions are true in a particular state, then that state will be labeled with the help of this particular leveling function. Okay. So, these are the two extra things that we are having along with the finite state machine. So, this model is known as our Kripke structure and the meaning of a CTL formula is defined in a Kripke structure. Now, this is a simple example you just see if you look into it. Now, what does it mean? It is having three state S 0, S 1 and S 2 and basically it is having three atomic proposition. We are having three atomic proposition A, B, C and when we are designing the system and when we abstract out the model, it seems that in the state S 0 the atomic proposition A and B are true. So, that is why this is the labeling function, we have labeled this particular state with A and B. So, A and B are true in this particular state S 0. Similarly, the atomic proposition B and C are true over here state S 2. So, it is labeled with B and C. Similarly, in state S 1 only atomic proposition C is true. So, this is labeled with C. So, this is the labeling function with the help of labeling function we have labeled those particular states. And secondly, we have the transition say if S 0 we are having a two outgoing edges two transition from S 2 we are having two transition from S 1 we have one transition to itself that means every state is having an outgoing transition. So, this is a valid Kripke structure and we can define the meaning of CTL formula in this particular model. Now, just consider this two randomly I have drawn two figures whether these are Kripke structure or not or here I am not talking about the labeling function. If I label them with some atomic proposition then it is fine I can say that T F. So, A B, B, C, D, F. So, labeling function is there that it is labeled with the atomic proposition that we are going to work with. Now, whether these are valid Kipke structure or not. So, one is there, labeling function is there. Now, we have to see the transition function whether it is complete or not. So, in the first diagram, if you just notice when we come to this particular state S6 we will find that there is no outgoing S. Okay. There is no outgoing transition from this particular state S 6. That means, transition relation is not complete. So, it cannot be considered as a Kripke structure, but here just I am putting one as extra as over here. So, what it says I am from S 0 I am having a transition to S 5. Now, if you observe you will find that from every state we are having at least one outgoing transition. So, this is a valid Kripke structure and we can define the meaning of CTL formula on this particular model. Now, as a simple example you just see this is a finite state machine we are having four state S 0, S 1, S 2 and S 3. So, this is the set of state first component S because it defines the model as your S transition relation and leveling function. This is the model M for Kripke structure. So, state S is nothing but S 0, S 1, S 2 and S 3. What is the transition relation? You just see as there is a transition from S 0 to S 1. So, S 0 to S 1 is a component. From S 1 we are having two transition one is going to S 3 and one is going to S 2. So, S 2 S 1 to S 2 and S 1 to S 3. When we are in S 2 then we are having a transition from S 2 to S 3 and when we arrived at S 3 then we are having a transition back to S 2. So, S 3 to S 3 and there is a self loop self transition. So, S 3 to S 3. So, in this particular transition relation we are having this particular sixth component that means, it is having six different transitions. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five six. So this transition relation is having three three transition. Now what is the labeling function? By looking into the labels, you can say that the labeling function is defined like that. Labeling function at the state s zero is nothing but p q r. So if I am using a set of atomic proposition as say p q r. Okay. So in that particular case, you find that the the labeling function at state s zero is your p q r. Similarly, level of s one is your p n q. Labeling function at s two is your r, and labeling function at s three is your q and r. That means it says that state s three is labeled with the atomic proportion q and r, and it indicates that the atomic proportion q and r are true in this particular state. S three, okay. This is the notion about the truth values of atomic proposition. Now, how we are going to define the semantics? So, let M be a model. So, M is having the component set of state, the transition relation, and the labeling function be a model of a CTL formula. Given any S in S, we define whether a CTL formula phi holds in state S. We denote this by M S models phi, or on the other way, we can say that phi, the C T L formula phi, holds in the state S of the given model M. Now, we are going to formally define the semantics of each and every C T L formulas. So, we are going to define it on a model M and the structural induction on phi, because phi is a C T L formula which consists of several. Sub formulas. If all the sub formulas, truth values of all the sub formulas is defined in a state, then only you can define the truth values of the given CTL formula in that particular state. So, what are the notion? It says that in state S, in model M, it models the top. Top is nothing but true, already I have mentioned, and bottom is nothing but false. That means it says that. True is always true in all the state, and false is always false in the in all state. This is the basic notion about the truth values. So, basically, it says that in all state, the true is true, or top is true. Truth values of true is true, and truth values of false is not true. So, it just says that it doesn't model phi. Okay, this is about the truth values, true and false, which are basically constant in our logic family. Now, again, it says that whether in any state of the given model the atomic proposition is true or false. It says that if p belongs to the labeling function of that particular state S, then M S models p, or you can say that p is true. In the state S of the model M. On the other hand, if it is not a member of this particular labeling function, then truth values of this particular atomic proposition is false at that particular state. Okay, so atomic proposition is considered to be true in a state provided it is a member of the labeling function of that particular state. Similarly, it says that. M S models phi, not of phi. That means not of phi is true in the state S, provided phi is not true at that particular state S. So M S phi does not model phi. So in that particular case, we say that M S models not of phi. This is very simple. I think you understand. So if this is a state, and if it is. Uh, Labeling function is model S P, and here you say it is Q. So it is P is not labeled at that particular state. So here I can say that in this particular model M, instead this particular say S one, it models not of P because P is not true at that particular state. So it says that it models not of phi, provided it does not model phi. So these are the small example I am giving. Say so, these are the labeling function L S zero, L S one, L S two, L S three. 
So, this is m s 0 models p, but m s 1 does not model p, okay, because it is not labeled with p. So, similarly now, we can use any logical connective, it is very simple say if it is n connective, it says that in the model in the state s of the model m phi 1 and phi 2 holds or not, whether phi 1 and phi 2 is true or not, provided m s model phi 1 and m s model phi 2. Okay. So, if both phi 1 and phi 2 are true in this particular state, then we can say that this models phi 1 and phi 2. Similarly, we know the all connectives either phi 1 is true or phi 2 is true. That is why it says that either if m s models phi 1 or m s models phi 2, then we can say that m s models phi 1 or phi 2. So, these are the some connectives whether m s model phi 1 implies phi 2. So, we know the equivalence p implies q is equivalent to not of p or q. So, it says that if m s does not model q 1 and m s models q 2. So, not of p or q. So, if not phi 1 is not true in S and phi 2 is true in S, then we can say that m s models phi 1 implies phi 2. So, this is small example again same notation that I am using. So, m s models p 1 or p q, p and q because both p and q is true over here. So, in S 1 p and q is true, but here only q is true, but still m s model p and q is true, but m S 2 does not model P and Q. Am I right? Because in S 2 only Q is true, but P is not true. So, P and Q is false. So, M S 2 does not model P and Q. Now, the logical connectives is simple. Now, we have to look for the temporal connectives. So, one is your whether in M S model A F Q. So, it says that m s model f q or I can say that a x i is true in a state s of the model f provided in all s 1 such that there is a transition from s to s 1 we have m s 1 model phi. That means, we are going to consider all the possible transition from this particular state s and whatever next that we are going to get in all the next state phi is true m s 1 model phi, then we can say that m s model phi a x phi. So, in this particular case you just see whether m s 0 models a s q. So, in all part in the next state whether q holds or not. So, from s 0 I am having 3 next states. So, s 1 q is true, s 2 q is true and s 3 also q is true. So, yes it models. Okay, if I check whether m s 0 model a s q, yes it is true because in all the next step q is true. So, similarly e x q whether m s model e s q. So, here also we are going to look for a transition from s to s 1 and if we are going to one such transition where m s 1 models phi, then we can say that e x phi is true in that particular given state. So, a x says that you look for all the next states and check whether q or phi is true in that particular states or not or for e x phi, you look for at least one such next state where phi is true m s 1 models phi. So, for one state S 1 such that we are having a transition from S to S 1, we have m S 1 models phi. Then we can say that m S models E x phi, m S models A z phi. It holds if all part, we are going to consider all parts such that S 1 to S 2 to S 3 like that we are having S part all parts where s equal to s 1. So, part starting from s 1 and this s 1 happens to be the s, then along this particular part 
all SI along the path and SI models phi. Okay. So, first you consider all possible paths. Now, in all possible paths you consider all the states SI and if in all SI that M SI models phi then we say that A S models A G phi. Okay. In all possible path in all state if phi is true then M S model A G phi or you can say that A G phi is true in the state S of the Wilhelm model M. Okay. So, there is a transition model it says that whether in whether it is true M S 0 model A G Q. So, if just see that we are talking about the S 0 in S 0 Q is true I am having one transition like that. So, in all the in this particular part in all the states Q is true I am having another transition like that. So, in this transition also Q, Q and all those particular Q is true and this is the another transition we are having. Okay. So, here also in all states Q is true that means, from S 0 if we consider all such part and in all S i along the part if it models phi then we say that A g phi is true. So, in all state in impossible part Q is true. So, in S 0 A g Q is true that means, M S 0 models A g Q. So, this is similarly E g Q. So, it is with the similar notion we can say that if there is a part. Now, in the A g phi I am talking about for all parts, but here we are thinking that there is a part and remaining condition is same that in all S i along the part. Now, you are considering a particular part and in all states of that particular part if phi holds then we say that M s model E g phi A f phi again in all part in future. So, again we say that if all parts we consider all such type of parts where S is equal to S 0 that starting state of the part and for at least one S i. So, we can consider this particular part okay, and you consider all possible part and along this all possible part at least we are going to get one state S i such that M S i model phi. Okay. Then you can say that in all part A f phi is true. So, consider all possible part of this sort and along all part at least look for at least one S i okay, such that M S i models phi that means, phi holds in the state S i then we say that M S i model A f phi the meaning is like that A f phi is true in the state S of the model M. So, similarly we can look for E f phi. So, in case of E f phi it says that it is similar to F phi, but it says that if there is one part now we are not going to look for all part we are going to consider one part if there exists a part such that at least we are going to get one S i along that particular part such that M S i model phi then we can say that M S model E f phi. So, this is the exact semantics of E f phi. So, next operator is your until operator already I have mentioned that it is an binary operator. So, phi 1 a phi 1 until phi 2 again whether in all part phi 1 remains true until phi 2 becomes true. So, that is why it says that you consider all possible such type of part S 1 to S 2 to S 3 like that where S is equal to S 2 we are going to consider this particular S that means, starting state is your S 1 in all such part phi 1 until phi 2 satisfied. Now, we are going to consider all the possible parts and in possible parts phi 1 until phi 2 satisfied. What does it means? That means, we are going to get some S i along the path. So, we are we are going to consider all possible part and along the path we are going to get some S i okay, where phi 2 is true in this particular S i 
and for each j less than i, so this is your i minus 1, i minus 2 like that. So, all those particular j as j it models phi 1, that means phi 1 must be true in all those previous steps. So, we have to get some s i along the path such that m s i models phi 2 and for each j less than i we have m s j model phi 1. Then we can say that m s models a phi 1 until phi 2. So, similarly we can define e phi 1 until phi 2 the notion is same. So, similar way we can define the formal semantics of this particular operator only defines is here we are saying that if for at least one part. Now, in case of A we are looking for for all parts, but E we are looking for at least one part where phi 1 until phi 2 is satisfied in this particular part and what does it means? We are going to get some state S i where phi 2 is true at this particular S i and all its previous state j is less than i m as j model phi 1. Now, here it is a simple example whether E p until q is true in this particular state as 0. Now, if I look into it then if you consider this particular part then what will happen? I am getting one state S 4 which models q okay. and in this particular part what are the predecessor we are going to get S 1 which model p and S 0 which models p. Okay. Uh, for all each j we have m as j model phi 1. So, we have seen that it models p it is model p and ultimately it models q then we are going to say that as 0 models e p until q, but whether as 0 model a p until q. If I look into it then we will find that it is not true because at least in this particular part I am saying that p is not remains true and nowhere q is also true may be some in few side may be q may be true, but p is not true in all the predecessor state. So, a p until q is not true in this particular model at the state s 0. Okay. Now, these are the formal semantics of the CTL. So, today what we have seen we have defined a formal syntax of CTL and formal semantics of the CTL and how to define the truth values of the CTL formula, how to construct correct CTL formula, how to get the semantics and CTL formula is a state formula and one basic notion just I have mentioned over here that every temporal operator must be preceded by a part quantifier. Now, one simple question now we are going to discuss it says that consider the set x it is having three atomic proportion p q r. Okay. Now, what is the power set of x? I think you know the notion of power set. So, what are the power set of x? If you see that that means generally phi is treated as a power subset or set of this particular power set or I can say that p is one subset of this given set, q is also a subset of this given set, r is also a subset of this given set okay. or I can say that p q is a subset, p r is a subset and q r is a subset. Also as per notation p q r is also a subset of x. Do you find any other subset of this particular three element? If you inspect it you are not going to get any other subset. So, this is the power set of this particular given set. Now, how many elements are there? I think there are eight elements because we know the number of the power set is equal to 2 to the power n if n is the number of elements of a given set. Now, here what is this basic notion actually you just see if I look into the power set basically it gives me all possible states of a given system. Why I am saying now we are talking about the atomic proposition 
and these atomic propositions are going to use to look for the state space system. What are the states we are having? And in keep case structure, you just see that we are having the labeling function, and its states are labeled with the atomic proposition which are true in this particular state. So, whatever subset we have written, we say that these are the root values of this atomic proposition is true in this particular subset. Now, in this particular case, I can say that this is the state S 0, where none of the atomic proposition P Q R is true. I can say this is the state S 1, where the atomic proposition P is true. This is the state S 2, where the atomic proposition Q is true. This is the state S 3, this is the atomic proposition R is true. And S 4 is the state, where the atomic proposition P and Q is true. S 5 is the state, where the atomic proposition P and R are true. And S 6 is the state, where the atomic proposition Q and R are true and S 7 is the atomic proposition, where all the three atomic proposition P, Q and R are true. So, if you look into the combination of the truth values, you are going to have this particular eight different possibilities and these eight possibilities can be now treated as the state of the system. If I am going to work with a system where it is having three variables, those three variables can be treated as my atomic proposition of the system and truth values of this atomic proposition will be either true or false and when we map it to the digital system, then we can say that this is either on or off or we are going to represent it with 0 and 1 in our digital logic system. Okay, embedded system is also implemented with the help of digital logic system. So, if we are having three, if we are working with three atomic variables or such three state variable, then number of possible states are eight only. We cannot get more than it. So, if we are working with n different variables or n different system variable, then we are going to get two to the power n states. So, we are going to have finite number of states, whatever big that n may be. If we are working with 100 system, system variable, that system variable may be either on or off state, we are going to get 2 to the power 100 different states, which is again finite in nature. So, that is why in our temporal logic, we are talking about the atomic proposition. When we work with our system, digital system, this atomic variable propositions are nothing but our system variables, those system variable states may be either on or off, on means true, off means false. So, this is the mapping basically and now depending on the number of state variable, we are going to have the state space and always state space is finite. But when we are going to design a system, all states may not be reachable. Some of the states configuration we may not achieve. So, if I am having n state variable, then we are going to get 2 to the power n states. Okay. So, as for example, I am having three state variable p q r or I can say atomic proposition. So, these are the possible state behavior and we can have a transition from S 0 to S 1 or S 0 to S 2 depending on our system. Now, in some system, all those particular states may not be a valid configuration. So, in that particular case, we are going to say reachable states, okay. where reachable state is always a subset of all those particular state, which is either less than or equal to 2 to the power n. Okay. So, these are the valid configuration of the system. If some configurations are not valid, then that will not come into the picture. And we will say that this is not valid of our system. Okay. So, this is the scenario. So, total possible states is your 2 to the power n, but in a in reality the receivable states will be less than this 2 to the power n, because all configuration may not be possible, because it may have some conflict. 
we will see with some example. Now, here is a depth. another question related to our temporal logic. So, a Kripke structure such that in a particular state E x P or Q holds, but E x Q and R does not hold. So, it says that basically I can give a some notation a example over here. So, if I am going to say that whether in this particular state Q or R is true or false. Okay. So, in that particular case, so at least I am having one state or in all state Q or R, any one of these things is true, or I can say that. Okay. But whether E x Q and R is true, here Q is true, but R is not true, here R is true, but Q is not true, but here nothing is true. So, E x Q and R is not true in S 0, but E x Q and R is true. Okay. So, this is A f Q or R and E f Q or R. So, one is in all part Q and R and there exist a part Q and R. Can you give a model? So, this is some very simple construct I can say. Okay. In this particular case, say if I go this particular part in future, I am getting at least Q is true. So, Q or R is true. In this particular part also, R is true. So, Q or R is true. In this particular part, Q is true. So, Q is R is true. In this particular step S 0, in all part in future, Q or R is true. But whether there exists a part in future, Q and R holds. So, in this particular model, if you find that in future Q not going to get any state where Q and R is true. Here Q is true, but R is not true. So, Q and R is false. Here also Q and R is false. Here also Q and R is false. So, we are not going to get any part where Q and R is true in future. Okay. So, these are the way you can see the truth values. Now, some properties. Now, we are CTL is used to express our properties. So, it properties it says like that it is possible to get a state where started holds, but ready does not hold. Okay. So, basically now it is a system we are going to work say if we are switch on the system then we can say that we have started a system, but we are having some other condition now whether the system is ready or not. Okay. Sometimes you can look into the printer you say that it is switch on that means already you have started a printer, but it is not ready due to some other reasons may be some thing has gone wrong to the system. So, is it possible to get a state where started holds, but ready does not hold. So, in a system we can reason such type of properties. So, when we are going to reason about such type of properties we have to express these properties with a formal notation. So, here we are talking about the CTL. So, we will see how CTL is used to express this particular property. So, it is something like that started holds, but ready does not hold. So, started and not of ready. So, is it possible to get a state? That means, in the system whether we are going to get such type of situation. So, there exist a path in future. So, we are saying that whether we are going to get any computational path or any path so, that in future started and not ready, this is going to happen. Okay. So, this is the CTL representation of this particular property. Is it possible to get a state where started holds, but ready does not hold? Another one, you just say for any state, if a request for some resource occurs, then it will eventually be acknowledged. Okay. So, in system it happens. We request for some resources, if it is available then it will be granted eventually. Okay. So, for any state if a request for some resource occurs then it will eventually be acknowledged. Now, how we are going to represent this particular property formally in CTL? 
So, if in a particular state if request is hold it is request for some resources then wherever you go in all part in future we are going to get acknowledged. So, say in this particular state we are requested for some resources. Okay. So, requested is a atomic proposition when we request then this two values of request. So, from this particular S 0 we may have different possible transition depending on the system behavior. So, it says that wherever you can go in future. So, that means in all part in future somewhere we should get the acknowledgement okay, because we have requested for our some resources. Now, system is having several behavior transition behavior. So, wherever we proceed finally, we should get the acknowledgement. So, requested implies in all part in future acknowledged and it says for any state. So, when we design a system such type of requirement may be true or may be required in all possible states. So, that is why it says that all part globally this must be satisfied. Okay. So, this is the one system behavior or one system property. Now, when we design the system then we have to check such type of properties or behavior. So, formally we have to capture it and we know the meaning now we will see how we are going to check those particular properties. So, you just see that if we are having some system behavior that can be captured with the help of CTL formulas and those CTL formulas will be used to give the specification and we are going to check whether those particular specification is true in our model. Model is nothing but my design of the system. Okay. So, this is the way we can think how CTL will be used while designing the embedded system. Okay. With this, I am coming to the end of today's lecture. Thank you all.